Okay, good. I'm um I'm seconding your uh
no. on there? So yes. it's seven thirty. Really good. Okay. Right at seven thirty. Are we ready? Anthony's on. Oh, are we ready? Well? I'm calling to send him an invite. Just tell me when we go live. Good evening, everyone. The New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advanced notice of meetings of public bodies. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Ramsey Board of Education has provided adequate notice of this meeting by sending a notice of the time, date, location, and to the extent known, the agenda of this meeting to the Ridgewood News on July 10th, 2020. Copies of this notice have also been placed on the administration bulletin board and sent to the borough clerk on July 10, 2020. Please stand for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America and to the Republic, the Republic for which, which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Ms. Burns. Here. Mr. Capuano. Here. Mr. Caputo. Here. Mr. Kaufman. Here. Ms. Lamandola. Here. Mr. Schifano. Here. Mr. Sassi. Here. Ms. Walsh. Here. Ms. Bierman. Here. We are calling the special meeting this evening to transact um, business brought before the Board of Education. Uh, Mr. O'Hearn, uh, I believe we previously circulated uh, minutes from the regular meeting of July 24th, 2020. Is everyone on the board in receipt of those minutes and are there any changes at this time? Seeing there are none, I'm going to ask for a motion to approve those minutes. I'd like to make a motion. Thank you, Mrs. Walsh. Is there a second? Let me second. second. Thank you, Mr. Capuano. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone Aye. opposed? Abstentions? So passed. Okay, communications, Mr. O'Hearn. Uh, just really quick, we need to pass that motion yes. for the electronic meeting. Yes, let's do that first. And then I also would like to um, make an announcement to the audience that if you would like to call in your public comments this evening, you can start doing so now by calling 862-666-1072. Someone will answer that phone, take your name and phone number, and then you will be called back in the order that those calls are received. We just um, have some concerns that technology may not go our way this evening. So um, anyone who wants to make a public comment, you could start now and you will be called back during the public comment section. Okay, that motion, Mrs. Walsh? If there are no objections, I'd like to make a motion. Um, administration 1R, that permits us to have this meeting virtually due to the current circumstances surrounding the COVID-19 situation. I'll is there a second? second? I'll Thank second you. my motion. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Mrs. Burns. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Extensions? So passed. Okay. Uh, the communications, Mr. O'Hearn. Okay, you're gonna have to bear with me tonight. Uh, the first one's email six one two thousand twenty from Deborah Saylor regarding a request for evaluation of curriculum, referred to the board as a whole. Uh, email dated six twenty six two thousand twenty from Jana and Joe in Cardona regarding school reopening issues, referred to the board as a whole. Email from Tom Santuli expressing thanks for his retirement gift and his gratitude to everyone he has worked with during his years at Ramsey. Again, the board as a whole. Uh, no card from Pam Yonkers expressing thanks for her retirement gift. To the board as a whole. Email dated 7-13-2020 from the Goddard School regarding the 2021 school year after care or after school care program uh, referred to the board as a whole. Uh, an email dated 7-17-2020 from Deb Saylor rendering her advice on COVID related concerns again to the board as a whole. Uh, email dated 7-19-2020 from Liz Mary 
Nacio uh, regarding her perception of announced football practice being illegal, uh, referred to the board as a whole. And the last one also referred to the board as a whole, email dated 7-20-2020 from Bridget Ruggles with a letter attached dated 7-19-2020 from several community members with suggestions on increasing diversity in our schools. Great, thank you, Mr. O'Hearn. Are there any committee reports this evening? Okay, um, I have one. I attended uh, the delegate assembly on Saturday, June 27th in Mr. Schifano's place since he was getting married and it was held uh, virtually. It was um, about a four and a half hour virtual meeting with hundreds of people. There were two resolutions. Uh, the first was submitted by the Alpha and Pohatong boards in Warren County and the Bloomsbury board in Hunterdon County seeking to reduce the threshold requirements from representation of ascending board on the receiving school board district. Um, you all can read about the excitement with that. It did pass and it was approved 133 to 19. And the second resolution was proposed by the Springfield Township Board of Education in Burlington County and proposed new policy language requiring the constituent district of a regional board of education to make appointments to fill vacancies on the regional school board. Um, that also passed, and um, since we are not a regional school board, uh, as proposed in there, it does not really affect us. Um, they gave a multitude of reports during that, all of which I know were posted online. So um, it was an interesting way to spend a Saturday morning. And I'd also, before we go into the presentation, like to let everybody know that assuming nothing else changes, which we know things change every day around here, that um, beginning in August, our board meetings will go back to being in-person board meetings, details of where that is um, and how we're hosting that so that we do comply with social distancing, et cetera, will be circulated um, to the board and to the public at a later date. But um, our goal is to try to get those back to in-person meetings with some type of a live stream to the public. I personally am unable to attend that meeting, but I want everybody to know I will not be there because I am having hip surgery, not because I don't want to be there. So my hope is that I can return to in-person board meetings in September, um, but I did just want to make that clear to the public. So Mrs. Walsh will be running that meeting and um, you're all in great hands. So with that, um, are we ready, Dr. Murphy, Dr. Yep. Radio, to move into the presentations tonight? We sure are. So thank you very much. And I want to uh, just congratulate Nick again for his wedding. Uh, the, one of the best decisions, the best decision I ever made was to marry a Ramsey graduate. So I think your wife now has, has made a, the same wonderful decision as well, marrying a Ramsey graduate. And I hope you're as happy as uh, the last 22 years have been for Megan Simpson and I together. So congratulations, Nick, on behalf of the board. So tonight we're going to be talking about um, the restart plan. But before we do that, I think it's only uh, fitting that I share this picture with you. Because it was not too long ago that we had what I consider the best night of the year and that is our graduation. And if you think about the roller coaster ride from March to early July when we pulled this off, it was one of a wide array of emotions, mixed messages from state uh, uh, officials, a lot of uh, emotional responses on social media. And there were times when uh, we didn't think we were able to do it. But if you take a look at this picture, I think this represents everything we stand for in Ramsey. You had teachers volunteer to come back in, in the closest to you. We had all but about 10 students make it back. And today I presented three of the 10 who couldn't be there, their diplomas along with the high school administration. And look how packed that front lawn was. And it rained about 45 minutes before and it cooled off. It was a, absolutely a beautiful event. Mrs. Bierman, your words were outstanding. The kids were poised and confident 
and, and their words, Caroline's words about how we can do and should make this world a better place, place still resonate with me, the singers. And I, I share that not only to acknowledge my Dr. Thumb and Mr. Esdell for the Herculean efforts. I, I, I would say to you, this was probably one of the best graduations this year in the entire state of New Jersey. But I think it represents the roller coaster, the obstacles, but more importantly, how we came together, even when there was diversity, when some parents were possibly upset that we weren't doing enough and how we rallied and we came together on something that didn't have great choices, right? Of course, we wanted a prom. Of course, we wanted a yearbook signing and the senior picnic, but we couldn't do it. But we rallied together. We put our differences to the side and look at that um, picture. And I, I share that only because I, I want that to be what we're thinking about as we move on to face yet another challenge. And that is the reopening of schools. Folks, there are no good choices. I sit before you as your superintendent of school to tell you, I wish there was a better plan. I know it's far from perfect. I, I heard from a lot of you in my last community update, not, not today, I asked you to share your thoughts and boy, oh boy, did you. And it, and it, it, it was the spectrum. Every day, full day, full remote, something in between, don't wear masks, wear masks. So I understand and I acknowledge upfront that this is far from a perfect plan. But what I do want to acknowledge is that a lot of parents and staff members came together along with two Board of Ed members and three students to debate to think outside of the box, to put together a plan that had the welfare and the safety of our students and our staff first and foremost. So tonight we're gonna to go through that. I hope you had a chance to read the FAQs, the website. They will remain fluid, meaning I will change them as can be. And I uh, want to point out again that I stand before you as your superintendent or sit before you this is my recommendation. Please do not go on to face social media and blast the staff. I've already been disheartened by saying, calling some Ramsey, you know, Ramsey teachers uh, lazy. That's, you know, or the Board of Ed. If you're angry and upset, everything should come to me because I am ultimately responsible for this school district. So I want to walk you through the setup before I hand it over to Dr. Matteo. So at the end of June, we got this. It hasn't even been a month. It's due next Monday, and the state still hasn't said to us what needs to be in the remote plan. So this is what we're up against. You have to have a remote plan. You have to put it to the state by uh, Monday the 27th, but we still don't know what should be in it. So we got to work right away. And one of the first things I did was I contacted the Ramsey Board of Health. If you read the remote plan, it says you have to work in concert with the Ramsey Board of Health. They have been nothing but fantastic to our school district, even previous during the COVID. They have been fantastic. I want to say that over and over again. However, in meeting with the Ramsey Board of Health officer, he doesn't he did not feel that we could bring back all the students for a full day. Okay, I want to repeat that. He didn't feel comfortable, confident that we could bring back the 3,000 kids and it could just be like it was pre-March. So the full day option right away was off of our plate. So then knowing that the full day option was off of our plate. And I get it. And I have to tell you, it's hard to argue because some of our classes have 20 kids, some have 27, some classrooms were built in the 50s, some are newer, all of different sizes. So to socially distance properly, we basically have to split the student population in half. Okay. And you have two options, folks, to do this. You can do A day, B day, 
or you can do a.m. p.m. So for instance, in a.m. p.m., half the school district goes in the morning, half goes in the afternoon. I'll tell you why, let me tell you some of the challenges. That means you have to have twice as many buses to do a.m. p.m. Because you need to bus the kids in the morning and bus them back at 12 and then bus the p.m. kids at 1230 and bus them back. We just don't have that transportation. We have an outsource, as many of you know, we have some internal transportation. We have uh, outsourced a lot of our bus runs. So that that created a huge problem. And for the grade levels that we could do it on, it would have been a minimal. So again, transportation, having an AM, PM day was a huge issue. The second issue about AM, PM day, and, and this is important to understand, is the remote learning. Governor Murphy announced yesterday that parents have the option to do 100% virtual. Okay, if that's the case, then we just don't have enough staff to do in-person learning and virtual learning. There's not enough staff. So what we had to do was carve out time, and that's why we went to minimum days, why we had to carve out time in the afternoon for the staff to meet remotely with those kids who are at home. So if we were able to pull off an AM, PM day, there would be no time if I'm a teacher, I'm teaching in the morning, I have a lunch break and I'm teaching all afternoon. When do I have time to meet with those at-home learners? So that is why we thought, along with other reasons that are in the plan, we thought that a minimum day was the best option. And this plan is different than other A day, B days. Dr. Matteo will go through it in a minute because we really try to maximize our live instruction. Now we're working hard. This is probably our 98th version of a plan. And you know what? The details from uh, Governor Murphy can come out on Friday and we might have to start all over. And that's okay because that's what we do in Ramsey. We're not afraid of hard work. We still don't have the protocols for COVID testing. Believe me, I'm going to get them with the Ramsey Board of Health. So it's purposely not up there because I have to work in concert with the Ramsey Board of Health. What happens if someone gets tested? What percentage of the school do you shut it down? What are the contract, contact tracing? All of that, I haven't ignored it. I haven't forgotten about it. But I have to be in concert with the Ramsey Board of Health. So please don't think that we are avoiding all those safety measures. All of that will be worked out, believe me. And lastly, since we just finalized the schedule now, the A day, B day, minimum day, we will now get to work on the safety protocols like I talked about, but also the aftercare program. Well, what I would call the child care program. We couldn't make any, we couldn't um, go to the public with aftercare until we had a, a schedule, right? Are we A day, B day? Are we AM, PM? But you have my word, we are going to maximize every classroom possible for childcare. And we will open it up to the fullest uh, maximum ability that we can to make, to give the opportunity to those parents who need, who need childcare. I haven't forgotten about it, but we couldn't put anything on paper until we finalize the schedule. Now that that's finalized, the community school director is already working with our principals about what classrooms are open, what staff do we need, and more information will come. Okay, so that's a little bit of a kind of a background information of how we got there, the decision-making process. Again, there are no good choices in all of this. I hope you take the time to read the FAQs in the website um, because uh, we try to do our best to anticipate all the questions and what a day would look like. So at this time now, I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Matteo 
who's really going to walk you through in great detail the work. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. Uh, good evening, Board of Education. Um, so this presentation will be on the website that Dr. Murphy shared earlier today. So it'll be posted either later tonight or tomorrow morning. Um, there's two parts to it. The first one is a an update on the summer curriculum work, um, some of which does inform the, the second part, which is the continuity of instruction plan and schedule. Um, some of it is just the the forward momentum of the school district, things that we had in place beforehand, um, other things that that need to keep going even in the in the face of COVID. So as Dr. Murphy said, I will um, walk through it fairly, fairly um, deliberately. And but if I, you know, as I said, it will be posted as well. So summer curriculum work. Um, there's more than this, but three that I wanted to highlight tonight. Um, are the senior profile projects that we're working on with Jay McTie and Envision Learning Partners. Um, if you know uh, educational research and curriculum, Jay McTie is kind of like the Michael Jordan of curriculum research. I remember um, Mr. Schifano talking about working on his his thesis last last period or, or last last semester with his class, so I'm sure um, I know he knows. Um, the tech, I want to highlight the tech PD that we have going on actually this week and next week um, in preparation for both the hybrid and remote learning and then curriculum revisions. Um, the first bullet point was underway and planned starting probably back in November because um, we knew that the mandate from the state was coming that we had to be ready in September. And it wasn't, it wasn't just to get ready for the mandate. You know, this is something that, that we um, we believe in and we think that we've done a really, we have a nice plan here. So I want to share that. I'll share the blended learning curriculum writing that we're going on in August. And then finally, the, the content prioritization as well. The last two will, will definitely lead up into the, the remote, the, the restart. So this summer, um, and starting in June, a team of 18 high school teachers and 13 administrators, so pretty much all high school administration and supervisors, are collaboratively working with Jay McTie and Envision Learning Partners out of San Francisco, California, to design eight new high school courses um, that are profile courses that for seniors to take, during which their culminating project will be a profile project, which during which they must defend their learning and through a public exhibition of how they have uh, mastered, made progress towards some of the profile of a graduate um, skills. That's been going on since about June 5th. We have a meeting coming up with them next week as well. So that's going really well. Um, I know we had set as a district a goal a couple of years ago to have all seniors complete profile projects. This puts well on our way to accomplishing that goal. Um, we always have a lot of summer PD and summer curriculum writing. We had some planned um, and then March 13th hit and we kind of saw what was ahead of us um, and we we kind of pivoted and and put a lot of our focus on developing our teachers toolkits for blended and remote learning. What that means is over the next two weeks, we have 36 sessions of virtual PD um, being attended by 115 Ramsey teachers. This week is being led by all Ramsey teachers. Next week's being led by an outside consultant. All sessions focus on tools that will help improve whatever September looks like. If we end up implementing this hybrid schedule that I, that I unveil in a couple of minutes, or we have to go full remote learning. Things like screencasting, um, delivering live instruction, using breakout rooms, using hyperdocs for assignments, digital assessments, and so on and so forth. Now into the curriculum revisions. Um, there is a mandate from the state that we look at our 6 through 12 curriculum through the lens of LGBTQ and disabilities to make sure that they're reflected. We also expanded that to include diversity. Um, we, we kind of have taken three avenues for this. One, 
and which I'll go into on the next three slides. One is in concert with West Bergen, West Bergen Mental Health Care, then is the Bergen County Curriculum Consortium, of which I am a member. And then on the right is an enhancement of our classroom libraries, specifically our 612 classroom libraries. So with West Bergen Mental Health, we, we, we have a long partnership with them. We asked them to conduct an audit of our existing English language arts and social studies curriculum through the lens of, does it have inclusive content and materials for LGBTQ topics and disability topics? They, what you, the, the graphic you see here is, is one of their tabs in which they've gone through our units and have made notice of where we do it well. And then they've made recommendations and suggestions of where it could be improved or ideas for enhancement. We're taking those recommendations and six um, suggestions and then the supervisors and the instructional coaches are filtering them and then looking to integrate them into our existing curriculum. Um, so that work is ongoing and it'll be, the opening units will be ready for September. Um, Mr. LaCurza, the ELA supervisor, Mr. Heffernan, our new social studies curriculum supervisor, and Mrs. Re Ms. Regent, our assistant director of special ed, and myself are, are leading kind of the, the work on that. The Bergen County Curriculum Consortium, knowing that, that this was coming down the pike for all school districts, also put together um, a group. That's a, you see the small picture there. Um, they tried to represent all districts, all 54 districts, I think, in Bergen County. I think they got 29. Um, it was actually Ramsey. You know, we put it out. We had um, about two dozen staff members apply to be part of it um, because they wanted to represent multiple districts. We only got one. Uh, nobody had more than one. So we our, our choral teacher at the high school, Mrs. Saltz, Ms. Saltzman, represented Ramsey on this curricular initiative. And very similarly to the way West Bergen, that West Bergen process I described, they gave us toolkits um, that include resources for LGBTQ plus diversity and disabilities and where those resources can be integrated into our current curriculum. So they they delivered a package to every school district in the in the county that then can because every school district pretty much have a different curriculum, so it can be kind of like a homegrown. So we are in the, we receive those um, at the end of June, I believe, or early July. And again, some of the same people, Mr. Lacurza, Mr. Heffernan, uh, Miss Regent, are working on that um, of integrating it. Now, this was a project that was underway much earlier in the school year. Um, and again, this is, I have to give Mr. LaCurza, I hope he's listening, a lot, of, a lot of credit on this. He conducted an exhaustive audit of our middle school and high school classroom libraries. As you can see on the right, that's like one spreadsheet of grade nine texts that are read either read as like the whole class novel, offered as a book club choice, or in our classroom libraries. He made note of the gender of the author, the ethnicity of the author, and then the themes that are found in the book. Um, again, some of those same kind of themes, but expanded upon it to include female empowerment, cultural and religious topics. We allocated uh, a lot of financial resources in June to diversify our classroom libraries. The pie graph that you see on the lower right is the current makeup of our high school libraries by author. Um, so we have about 60% written by white authors and about 40% written by authors of color. Our goal is to continue to improve that balance. Um, you know, of all the things that I am sharing with you tonight we are well aware that this is a work in progress and always will be a work in progress you know we think we've said before we're really committed to do better um but you know i hope that that this shows that that we do have that commitment and we are making strides in that way now moving into some of the curricular revisions that are targeted specifically for the re remote um or hybrid learning that will take place beginning in september we made the decision in um, early May that we would touch 
every opening unit of every course K-12 this summer. We dedicated summer curriculum hours for at or multiple teachers in a grade level or discipline to look carefully at the opening unit and look to integrate more blended learning components. Could be digital assessments, screencast videos, hyperdoc assignments, to name just a few. Um, those will then be shared out with the, the grade level, the, um, the discipline in general, um, maybe the department at the high school level. So we couldn't tackle the entire year in this way. So we focused on every opening unit of every course, which takes us to about more or less mid-October, that October 12th PD day. One thing with this plan and this year, I think it's going to be a continually a continually revisit. We have to revisit and adapt. So we're planning to do a similar thing, you know, and being creative about how we do it. The other curriculum revision that's going to take place in August and then in early September, and then really ongoing during professional development is looking at our curriculum and deciding what is the most important content. What are the most important skills? Um, this is a research finding you see from 2005, Robert Marzano. Um, he did a, a, a research study of the standards, national standards, and it would take 23 years to cover all the standards that are listed. So the truth is we never had enough time to cover all the standards. And this is just putting it in sharp relief that we have to precisely identify which are the goals that we value, which is the content that kids need to be able to do, what do they need to know, what are the prerequisite skills. Not an easy task, um, but a task that just about every school district in the country is sharing with us. Um, this came from a blog that I read recently, and it is called Marie Kondo, The Curriculum. Um, for those of you, hopefully most of you are familiar with the Marie Kondo of kind of minimalizing, you know, just keeping those things that give you joy. I've never done it, um, but I've heard. Um, so that's kind of the idea with the curriculum is that you not not down to the bare bones, right? It's not going to become a basic skills curriculum by any stretch. More, we're going to focus on the big goals, the big understandings, the content and the skills that are fundamental. Because um, there's a lot in the standards that are nice to haves, but they might not be essential. And given what lies ahead of us with a split schedule, A day, B days, remote, you know, we have to make some good, some tough choices, um, which we'll do. And just again, uh, a tweet yes yesterday from Jay McTie that, you know, the, the goal is what students learn, what they understand. The goal is not to fill them up with discrete facts and knowledge. It's what our district goal of teaching for understanding is really all about. It makes more sense now than ever. We're teaching for understanding. We're teaching for transfer. We're not teaching a bunch of facts. We're not teaching discrete skills for, for their own ends, their means to ends. And this is kind of one of the templates that we will use that, that, that Jay has um, put forth. And you see, this is an example from a statistics class. In white is like the big ideas, what you need, the, the, the real enduring understandings. The next level out is really important to know and do. And then there's the worth being familiar with. And that's between the blue, the two shades of blue, that's where we're gonna have to make some, some choices. Um, where do we emphasize? Where do we put our time and intentions? So that is before we talk about the continuity of instruction schedule and plan. So there's a lot going on besides that. Um, a lot of it, as I said, does inform the plan. Um, I'm proud of the work that we're doing with the diversification of classroom libraries and curricula. It is um, a work in progress. It's something that we look forward to continuing this year, next year, and probably over the next forever. Um, but I, I did want to kind of make that, you know, make that public, for lack of a better word. So now, 
the real reason we're here tonight. Um, some of this Dr. Murphy mentioned, the, the timeline is a very short one. On June 26th, the road back was released by the Department of Education, 104 pages of guidelines and suggestions, um, not terribly helpful, um, but gave us a starting point at least. Over those last three and a half, four weeks, the district restart and the school-based pandemic teams have met multiple times um, to illustrate what an ongoing fluid situation it is. Just yesterday, Governor, Mur Governor Murphy tweeted out that families will be allowed to choose an all remote option. Um, we were planning for something in that realm, but that even kind of emphasized it more. Um, so the plan is even adjusted in the past 24 hours. Tonight is the presentation to the Board of Education. As Dr. Murphy mentioned earlier, we have to submit the plan to the county on Monday, and then we anticipating having the full plan released to the Ramsey community on August 3rd. Because um, what you'll see here tonight is not the full plan. There are not all details. Um, it doesn't go over a lot of the, you know, the protocols and some of the health things. This is more of the instructional schedule as we understand it today to help families, help staff with wrapping their head around what this might look like come September. So, as I said, there was a district restart committee and five school-based committees. They were consisted of 74 staff members, um, including teachers, custodians, secretaries, um, and, and other roles in the district. There was 23 parents, 12 administrators, three students, and two Board of Ed members. So we have read and digested about every article and op-ed and blog and tweet that has to do with designing an opening plan. And the one thing that, that kept coming back was that you should really have some core principles to guide the plan and your decisions that you can keep touchstoning back to. So we came up with six principles when selecting kind of a schedule and that these principles will also inform us as we go into the details. So number one is that the vision is not canceled, right? The profile of the graduate doesn't go away because of COVID-19. It doesn't go away. In fact, it's more relevant than ever. Over these past three or four months, the adults, the students have had to use their, their, um, their empathy, their adaptability in spades, um, some of which you know, is a work in progress for all of us. So as we make these curricular decisions, the vision is not canceled, right? Now more than ever, the world is a place where you need these skills. Number two, we know that relationships of school are foundational. You'll see in the plan that we, we emphasize student-teacher interaction, whether face-to-face -face or through live instruction. Our instructional plans in September will emphasize this. One thing we were able to lean on in the spring was that the students and teachers had a sixth or seven month relationship to fall back on. Come September, that's not really going to be the case. So it's not like September 3rd, you can just jump into a Zoom talking about you know, the, the, the properties of chemistry. There's a teacher-student relationship that is foundational. We're gonna design with equity at the center. Um, that means that the plan is not a one size fits all. Um, most students will come on an A day, B day. Um, there might be some times where students who remote learning doesn't serve them really well and there's a valid reason could come more than the A day, B day. Um, those are details which will be fleshed out um, in the next two weeks. But it's not, does, it's not doesn't mean one size fits all. Focus on students and not gaps. That means that you've heard a lot of, the, you may have heard a lot of like the COVID slide, you know, kids losing all their skills. Um, and there will be some gaps that need to be filled. Um, but we are not going to take the instructional and philosophical approach that when kids come back, they need to be fixed. They need to be pumped with 
facts and skills that they missed in the spring. We will do, we, we will use formative assessment, observation. There will be diagnostic assessments, maybe not the first day or two, but we're going to, and the teachers will use their talents as teachers to formatively assess, find gaps, and then backfill those gaps in the moment, um, or design reteaching for the next day or, or virtually. But we're not going in with this deficit-based mindset that the kids have been, um, you know, just completely void of any growth. I'm not saying here that, you know, naive that there hasn't been some, you know, of that, especially maybe at the lower grades in, in literacy. So it will look different, but um, that is a principle that we are strong on. The building time will be gold, right? In an A day, B day, the kids are in school. Um, while they have five days of teacher contact, it's face-to-face -face in school, probably for most two days a week. So how do we take advantage of that time in school? We shouldn't leave it, you know, that shouldn't be like kind of lecture or things that could be done through a Zoom, right? What does having a teacher in the classroom with you, what can you do then that you can't do other times? This also is um, informing the way that we're scheduling specials at the elementary school. You know, we don't, again, to the focus on students that, that we have real live human beings in front of us, we don't want them to come back to school and pump them with math, reading, writing only. We are intentionally designing them to have specials um, because if not, we've taken away almost everything that a kid loves about coming to school. Um, so that, that's another foundational principle. And finally, attention to adult learners. And that means teachers and parents, um, you know, more than ever, parents have been partners with us in this educational journey. Um, so we are going to be putting together resources to help parents not be their student's teacher at home necessarily, but different ways that they could assist and guide. Um, we'll be on, uh, rolling out Schoology parent accounts um, over the next month and a half. That'll be a nice tool to help monitor and, and um, check in on student work. And for teachers, this, this adult learning has already started um, with our tech. And you'll see built into the schedule, we have a synchronous Wednesday. And on the Wednesday, you know, we've allocated the second half of the day for professional responsibilities. It could be collaborative planning time, could be professional development. Because one thing that we are going in with eyes wide open, this is going to be a, 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 a tall task for teachers to have two groups in school and a, school, and a group at home, um, let alone all the sections that they teach if they're a middle school or high school teacher. So the task of the committees was to develop a reopening plan to balance at its heart these two things, a continuity of learning and the health and safety of our students and staff. Oftentimes, those things are in tension with each other. So as Dr. Murphy said at the outset, there's no perfect solution. These are compromises, they're trade-offs. Um, we had really smart people on all the committees arguing from different sides of the coin. We had the same people, myself included, making the same argument from two sides. Um, so it was a healthy debate and we're well aware that it's not a perfect solution. When you have these two worthy goals in front of you, I think that's what's going to inevitably happen. So when we started, we, we looked at all the continuum of options. We, on the left, we have full face-to-face, -face, which is maximizes continuity of learning. On the right side of the continuum, we have full remote, which maximizes the health and safety of the students. As Dr. Murphy also said, the, the health commissioner in Ramsey said he does not recommend, nor could he support, full face-to-face, -face, five days a week, all students. So that was pretty quickly taken off the table. And that was, that was five days, full day with PPE and social distancing. It wasn't just come back pre-COVID. In the road back, Governor Murphy and the State Board of Education took away full remote for a district. 
Now, his tweet yesterday said families can choose all remote. Districts still cannot choose all remote. So we don't have the option of saying, Ramsey, even if we wanted to, that Ramsey School District is choosing full, full remote. So that leaves us in the middle with a hybrid, a blended learning approach, a mixture of face-to-face -face learning and online learning. As we developed this blended learning schedule and approach, we were mindful of that during the school year, at any time, we could switch back to face-to-face, -face, full face-to-face, -face, or full remote. We wanted to have a plan that could help us do that um, as seamlessly as possible. We didn't want to be caught as we, you know, many districts were in March. You had a couple of weeks to prepare and then ultimately like a weekend to prepare for full remote. Other factors we had to consider um, is educating two I'll call them two groups here, and, I'll, and it's really three groups, and I'll show you why it's three groups. But the two groups are the, the hybrid students on the left. Those are the students who are going to be getting a mixture of at school and at home learning. And then the students and families who opt to choose all remote. And as Dr. Murphy said, we don't have double the staff. So we have to find a creative solution during the school day to provide instruction to both of these groups. So the solution that we came up with as a committee is A, B minimum days with full remote Wednesdays. And those Wednesdays will be live synchronous instruction. Um, and I'll get into the details. So this is A, B minimum days with full remote Wednesdays, K pre-K through 12. So what is it? The students are, will be divided into three groups. There will be a blue group, there will be a gold group, and then there will be an all remote group. They'll be divided alphabetically as to, to create a balance and keep families on the same schedule. The blue and gold students come to school for face-to-face -face instruction on one day, while the opposite group stays at home and participates in at-home learning. They will also have a video conference in the afternoon with an optional video conference with their teacher in the afternoon. All remote st students will complete their instruction at home and have a mandatory check-in via video conference with the teacher in the afternoon. Wednesdays are all remote with live instruction for all. So the rationale for the choice of A-B minimum days. We did also consider the A-M-P-M split and an A day, B day, full day. This approach allows for five days of teacher contact at the K-5 level, whether it be face-to-face -face or live instruction or, or live check-in via video conferencing. It keeps the entire district on an A-B schedule and families on the same A-B schedule. It avoids lunch recess, which for those of you who have ever been in an elementary school or even a middle school, would be an impossibility for students uh, to social distance, and nor would we really, could we realistically ask them to do so. It avoids having multiple groups of students in K-5 on the same day, the AM, PM. And both the lunch and recess and the AM, PM also helps us with the more time to clean the buildings. Now, for synchronous Wednesdays, the, the four, there's more reasons, but the main reasons that, that the committee decided to put forth synchronous Wednesdays, it allows the full class to meet together at least once a week. So if I'm in a seventh grade math class, there's an A group and a B group, or blue and gold. On Wednesday, we all come together to have live instruction with the hope that at some point we come back to full face-to-face -face, and that's the class, or we have to go full remote and then that class would be um, learning in concert anyway. Second one, the second bullet's a little confusing, so I'll, but, but it's a really important one. It allows, and, and when I show the weekly schedules, I think it will be more illustrative. illustrative. It allows for both an A, B, A, B, 
rotation of days. So there's an A day on Monday, a B day on Tuesday, an A day on Thursday, and a B day on Friday. And then the next week starts again with an A day. Two things that that is allows, it allows the flow of instruction for a teacher when they have their, their students split in half so they can kind of keep going into the next week instead of, and it allows each week, each Monday to have the same schedule. If you didn't have the Wednesday with a five-day week due to the, being an odd number, if you went A, B, A, B, A, and you started the next week B to continue that flow of instruction, your Monday would be different. If you went back to being A, B, A, B, A, and then started again at A, it would, it would then still mess up the flow and your days would be different. Um, synchronous Wednesdays also allow us time in the afternoon for the professional responsibilities. And it allows time for deep cleaning of buildings with no students in the building on Wednesday. Here's what a weekly schedule would look like at an elementary school. Um, let's take Monday. If I'm in the blue group, I'm in school for about four hours following a minimum day schedule. Uh, I'm with my teacher participating in face-to-face -face instruction. If I'm in the gold group, I'm at home during that time working on assignments that the teacher has posted um, on Schoology at the beginning of the day. There's the teacher lunch, students, blue students go home. There will be an optional check-in with the gold group. So those students who are home working on their assignments during the morning have a chance to check in with their homeroom teacher, ask questions, um, just interact with their teacher and other classmates. Um, and then after that, there will be a mandatory check-in for the all remote group. And that will be, um, again, not necessarily new instruction, but they'll be um, reviewing and having a chance to ask questions about the assignments that they were doing that Monday. On Tuesday, it flips with the gold group being in school and the blue group being at home and so on and so forth. On Wednesday in the morning, you see there's the synchronous schedule. This is where the blue group, the gold group and the all remote group get together and will meet on the Google Meet and they will have live instruction from their teacher um, in the morning. In the afternoon, we're, we're devising creative solutions to have some other synchronous options, possibly from specialists or or, thing, or assemblies or things of that nature. That That is a detail that hasn't been flushed out at this moment. So as you can see, there's a lot of moving parts, but every student has the opportunity to have teacher interaction every single day and interaction with classmates every single day. Broken it down to a daily schedule for elementary students. Um, so the blue group, again, in the morning, they could be coming in for reading, you know, their, their normal schedule and go home and have homework. Might be on the computer, might be more traditional homework, could be a combination of the two. The golden remote group are working on their homework in the morning and then in the afternoon, they're having their check-in. If you see on the bottom right in the small font, um, and it's small font just so it can fit, not to hide it, um, the New Jersey Department of Education says you have to have four hours of instruction per day. But instruction during COVID-19 and the road back, as they define it, is not four hours of instruction in front of a teacher. So it's four hours of instruction as defined in front of a teacher, completing work, completing independent assignments. So that's kind of the, and that's K-12. So that's the barometer to start with. Moving to the secondary, the mornings are the same. You flip-flop between the blue group and the gold group with the synchronous Wednesday. The afternoon is where there's a, a, a slight change. There, because a secondary teacher has either four or five sections, it's not realistic to have a, um, a check-in, which, you know, with each of them, they'd be like seven minutes long. Um, so we'll have office hours that will be optional 
for the blue group, but that'll be a chance for them to, again, ask questions, review, and then there will be a mandatory check-in office hours with the all remote group where that exact schedule is still to be determined it might not be a mandatory check-in four days a week could end up being something like two days a week but those are some of the details that we're going to um, get into in the next week uh, three four days sample schedule one on the left is pretty self-explanatory on the right the students are at home there's multiple ways that our teachers can and will approach this. It could be that they're working on content or concepts or assignments that they previously started in school or were introduced to. It could also be the more of the flipped classroom model where they're doing reading and viewing videos in preparation for the active learning that's going to happen in the classroom. Again, back on that principle of building time is gold. So those are, kind of different options that teachers will utilize at their discretion, different models, and then the office hours of check-in. As we are developing this, this hybrid plan, we've also are working on a full remote learning plan. In the, in the um, and this is different than the all remote students. This, when I say full remote, that means like the whole, that public health situation worsens Governor Murphy says all schools are, all school buildings are closed again, back to full remote learning. So we've already started enhancing this and coming up with a new schedule. That will include more live instruction than we had in the spring. It will include Schoology use K-12. In the spring, we used it four through 12. Um, actually tomorrow and Thursday, the K-3 teachers are attending professional development on using Schoology in a K-3 environment because the feedback we got was that um, the Schoology was a really helpful organizational tool and a K-3 without it, it, um, it was a detriment. As I mentioned before, parent accounts for Schoology will be unveiled for the school year and we've ordered Chromebooks for K-3 through three students that will be arriving in mid-October. Um, we ordered these in late May or early June. Um, as you can imagine, all technology is backlogged. Um, so the vendor told us that for a couple reasons, they won't be arriving till mid-October. One, production in China is down and we lost out to four different countries that have hired, that have ordered Chromebooks for their entire K-12 population. So that's what we're up against. Um, and then to continue other improvements that will help both blended and remote learning. K through six families will be informed in the next week or so from the Ramsey Community School that in late August, we're offering virtual sessions for week long virtual sessions for K six literacy and mathematics. We're calling them stepping stones courses um, as a way to review the previous grade levels curriculum and get exposure to some of the kind of foundational topics and skills that will be needed in the upcoming grade. We invested in something called Sora, which is a digital platform for eBooks and audiobooks. And we invested in a product called Defined Learning at the K-5 level, which is an online project-based performance task platform, which will also be very helpful in designing project-based learning and extension assignments at the K-5 level. So with that, thank you for um, paying attention for it. For your, I will stop sharing my screen now and we'll see if any board members have any questions. It's Jenna. Yeah. Can you so do you mind just um because you have a lot of new K to three parents? Do you want me to reach you? Can you no, do you mind uh sharing what schoology is for K parents who haven't experienced it yet? Great. Um sure. Schoology is a it's called a learning management system. It is a it's a platform that will house it's like an online 
course. So if, you know, if you're taking a class in an online college, you would have a place where all of your materials are kept. So Mrs. First grade teacher, you know, uh, Miss Bavona at Hubbard will have a course. That's where all of her folders. So like when you go in, there'll be a message from Miss Bavona. Here are your assignments for the day. Here are the folders with all of the links and materials. So it's not like 5,000 emails and a Google slide and emailing the teacher. It's almost like one-stop shopping. That's the goal of it. We're, we're still improving our use of it. I had a, uh, first off, you know, you obviously have done, you and the team have done an outstanding job thinking through this with the short timeline. So I just wanna want to put that out there that I know how, how demanding that has been um, and just, Bravo to you and the team for thinking quickly and, and obviously very pragmatically in how you approach all this. Um, you had mentioned, um, you know, what I would consider the power standards as you're going through with each discipline, you're going to identify those core standards that you want to focus on. Um, is there any plan to share what the dis what what the district is uh, has identified as those core power standards? with parents who may opt for a full remote instruction so they can substitute or at least identify those those standards and work towards them in their own creative ways if they were so to choose to do that. I see Dr. Murphy. Uh, that's an interesting point, Scott. I think at this point, right now until we get further guidance from the state about what remote learning is and what it is not i our plan right now is to keep the remote learners up to date with the assignments we may not be able to deliver the instruction live but we're just not saying you're on your own mm -hmm. So they, by virtue of getting the assignments, will know what those power standards, as you call them, are. Our plan okay. is that if you, again, the state hasn't defined remote learning, but our plan is you're, if, you're, if you choose to do 100% remote learning, you're still going to get your assignments on Monday. Sure. Like everyone else will. Okay. And Matthew, along those lines, it's for, for parents who decide that they want to choose remote learning or vice versa, parents who in the beginning decide that they want their their children to choose the the live option are we going to give them the opportunity or are you recommending to give them the opportunity if they find out that remote remote learning is not working for my child they need to get in the class or i don't feel comfortable with my child being in the class i think that remote learning if they are we giving them that opportunity to to change their minds at some point to the best of our ability to be able to if the if the classroom facilitates it it's much easier, I understand, to get the children out of the classroom, but to, to get them back in. Is that going to be a possibility? Absolutely. That's, you know, it, it, it's at the core of our belief that we want what's best for all children at Ramsey. I can't tell you it can open, uh, happen overnight. You know, it may not be immediate, um, but without a doubt, we're here to make sure that our children are healthy physically, emotionally, well-educated. So while it's not gonna be pop in one day, pop out another week, without a doubt, we will do what we can if, if the transition needs to occur. Absolutely. Any other board members have questions at this point? Okay. Um, thank you, Dr. Matteo. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. Thank you to our entire administrative team. We, um, I know you guys have been literally working seven days a week on this and I've seen, Mrs. Walsh and I have probably seen 15 versions of this, if not hundreds. Um, and look, we're doing the best we can with what we've been given by the state and the parameters within which we have to work in the current um, state of affairs. So. Um, thank you to the 144 people who served on the committees to get this done in the last three weeks. Um, and so, you know, we really, really appreciate it. At this point, 
If you are done, Dr. Matteo and Dr. Murphy, then we are going to move into public comments. There is only one public hearing tonight. So for those people who are watching this board meeting that um, typically watch the board meetings, tonight we're only doing one public comment because it is a special meeting. I want to lay out uh, the rules of how public comment works for those unfamiliar. When um, we do have some people who've already called. So uh, Mr. O'Hearn facilitates those calls. He will call those people back in the order which we received the calls tonight. And you can continue to call into that phone number uh, throughout the public comment portion of the meeting. You need to state your name and address. You have three minutes to speak in accordance with the board policy. It is not a dialogue with the board. So we um, listen through all the public comments. And when I close public comments, we respond at that time. So at this point, Mr. O'Hearn, we are ready to go. Go ahead. Can't hear. No, he's not talking yet. God. Okay. Well, thank you to the uh, the board for putting this together tonight. You know, as you can imagine, uh, as you give information, there's always going to be more questions uh, due to that. So, I have several questions, and I'll use my time. Uh, can you start with your name at least? So just going. But can you please state your name and your address? Sure. I'll state my name, Evan Cavell. I'm a Ramsey resident. Just in case people don't agree with me, I'd sooner not give out my address given the climate of today. Um, hopefully that'll be sufficient. Sure. Um, as, as far as um, I understand that adjustments need to be made, um, but it's also important to understand how much of the virus is circulating in our community. And, you know, based on that, that's where some of these questions came from. So can you give some supportive evidence as to why the Department of Health um, feels that we can't go full and need to do these A, B days, you know, and it just seems what's the difference between a four hour a day, a regular school schedule, um, what happens if a teacher or a student or staff member tests positive? Does that mean that the school is deemed to be closed? Um, you know, what does that process look like? Has, has there been any thought or plans on that? Um, as far as special services goes, if a child needs something like physical therapy and end to the school day, um, and are pick up and drop off included in those four hours. So is it really a three hour and change day? Um, and then I also think importantly, what isn't going to be happening this year that normally occurs during the school year? What type of activities, special events, um, increase or decrease to holidays, um, you know, it's going to be happening. What can we expect more from, from this year as we go into um, the crazy school year that it is? Okay, thank you. Um, we are, I know Dr. Murphy and I are writing down all the questions. And as, after we get through all of the callers, I promise you we will answer every one of these questions. So um, thank you very much. We can move to the next person. Name and address, please. Hi, my name is Sarah Poppy, 7 Biscayne in Ramsey. I had a couple of questions. 
Um, my company is requiring all employees to go back to the office full time. That's going to leave us at a deficit for any sort of remote instruction that may be offered, whether it be Wednesdays or days that red is not being offered. And I was wondering if the governor is um, expected to give any advice to corporations to accommodate this, if you've heard anything. Um, also, for those in, um, working families who can work remote, will subscription busing be an option for those families? And that was all. Thanks, Sarah. Okay, name and address, please. Hi, Debbie Can you repeat um, that? Sorry, you kind of sure. closed it. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Debbie Falco, and I live at 82 Nottingham Road in Ramsey. Uh, my question is, can you share gender, race, and ethnicity composition of both classroom educators and also administration and supervisors? with regard to the concerns for diversifying both the curriculum and um, potentially even the, um, the face of the Ramsey education system. That's my question. Okay? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Name and address, please. Oh. Hi, my name is Tina Kiki, and I live um, in Ramsey. Um, my question is, and thank you for the presentation, and what I wanted to ask about was um, back in June, there was a note sent out to families that there was an equity and diversity committee developed. Um, so I was hoping we could learn more about that. Um, what is the composition of this group? Is it a diverse group of persons who are included in it? And then what would be the overall like mission and goals of this committee? Would it be something temporary or something that would be more, you know, you know, consistent and hope um, and hopefully guide the reevaluation of our curriculum and ongoing um, improvement in our program? I'm seeing some faces. They may not have exactly heard what you said. Um, yeah, it was very difficult. I don't even know who it was, and it was very difficult to hear who it was, like what the question was. Should I start over? Thinking about yeah, the diversity committee. Go ahead, try one oh, more okay. time. Hi, this is Tima Kuti Moranzi resident. Can you hear me? Much better. Yes. Okay. Great. Uh, what I'd like to um, ask about is um, back in June, we heard about the Equity and Diversity Committee that was developed. So I was hoping you could share more about what that committee is like. It's so hard. Okay, okay. great, thanks. Yep.
name and address, please. Go ahead. My, you're you're still on mute. No, go ahead, Miss Perry. You're ready. Don't don't oh, don't pay attention to your computer. Okay. <laughs> My name is Lorraine Perry. I live at 98 Ronald Court in Ramsey, and just wanted to say thank you um, for everything that's been laid out. And um, I think it was Dr. Murphy said there are no good choices here. So so thank you for exploring uh, so many different things. Um, my question has to do once again with the diversity and what you have planned. And I think after listening to tonight's presentation, what can you plan going forward to address, to enhance programming and address diversity and anti-racism in Ramsey? And it, it sounds like um, a possibility for um, the Wednesday sessions. Um, when different topics can be dealt with. And uh, note, as I said, I know this is a work in progress and, and appreciate um, any steps that can be taken to address the diversity and anti-racism. Okay, thank you so much. Great, thank you. Thank you. All right, we have one more. Okay, you're ready. Name and address, please. Hi, this is Laura Sobel. I live at 99 Center Street. Um, I just have a quick question about your technology, and if I'm thinking about that Wednesday, all day, or whatever, half day of um, live instruction, and wondering how much you've investigated your ability to um, kind of pump out. I'm assuming you're doing it from the school. Um, maybe that's incorrect. Um, but to produce a lot of live streaming going out. And then also, more importantly for me, from the home perspective, um, we definitely experienced in the spring an inability to have multiple children online at the same time. And even in this meeting, you can see things freezing up and timing out. And so um, with the, anything that's live, it's my concern, is how are we dealing with that and how are we going to, I don't know, somehow manage the fact that there's a lot of technology issues that um, we can't necessarily uh, deal with at home. And that's it. Great. Thank you. Thank you. One more just came in. Hang on. Name and address, please. Good evening. It's Deborah Soller, 34 Oak Ridge Road in Ramsey, New Jersey. Go ahead. State your question. Yeah, thanks. Um, thank you very much to the board and to the administration for the work that you have put in and um, are continuing to put in to ensure the safety and education of our children and the community. So first off, I want to say that comment. Um, I had a couple of questions. One, I'll, I'll dovetail from the last caller with regards to Wednesday. Um, for um, I'd like to know some additional information if there's a picture yet of what Wednesdays would look like so that we can make appropriate plans um, for, for our family and for others as well. What Wednesday will kind of look like maybe just for some sketch about um, the time that would be involved and whether it would all be online. And the other We lost her. We lost. Um, 
as it being minimum days for twice a week, I wanted to know if there was additional information that you could provide that was the reason for the Ramsey Board of Health officer's decision that he did not feel comfortable with a full return, would there be additional information that he could um, make a recommendation that that decision would some point change? And um, if there was any additional information that you could provide the community about the basis for his decision about the um, not returning to school full time and whether there was any um, consideration or, or any comments from the Ramsey Board of Health officer about the safety to return t twice a week to school for those minimum days. Just trying to get some more information about what that decision was in case things change in the future. So thanks again and looking forward to your response. Thank you. Are there any other calls, Mr. O'Hearn? Yeah, there's one more. Hang on a sec. Go ahead, name and address. Okay. Oh, hi. Um, this is Amy Adler, and I'm at 651 Richmond Court. Um, my question is, can you tell me when we will know about subscription busing? I actually received an email today um, reminding me that they might not even have busing come September. Um, if there's a deadline that you'll be telling parents, because we're quickly getting into August and uh, working parents need to make their plans. Um, and what will social distancing look like on the bus at middle school and high school level? And also um, just keeping in mind that not having the buses could impact parents' choices for keeping their children home all day as well. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, Mr. O'Hearn? I do see the same person again. Hang on. Okay, it's it's Miss Towsey again. Um, go ahead, Miss Towsey. Hi, this is Seema Tusi again from Ramsey. Can you hear me? Tusi, sorry. Yep. Yes. Hi. Ah, great. Um, I just wanted to, um, you know, again, just sort of um, piggyback a little bit on what others have said before. Um, I was curious if we could learn more about the decision um, in the K to three group as to why they couldn't come in for. Um, Oh, great, thanks. Um, I think there's more and more data coming. We um, lost you on that last part there. We heard K, K to three group, and then after that, we missed you. Please turn off your. Uh... 
I did. Go ahead. Okay. So go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so we're learning more and more that children, especially younger children from K to three, are far less at risk of getting infected and spreading to others. So I was wondering if we could understand more as to why they couldn't, and that age group couldn't come in for a full day. Is it because of the inability to socially distance them in the classrooms or um, or the fear of them not being able to wear masks all day? I was wondering if you could shed some light on that. Um, thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. One more. Okay, name and address. Um, hi, Linda Moore, Forest Avenue in Ramsey. Uh, my question is, how um, are we planning for social distancing at the elementary level? And if there was any guidance or dis decisions made about um, masks? Um, the other question that I had, I think someone else answered about what happens if someone is identified um, as COVID positive? What, will be, what are the guidelines in terms of um, contact tracing or perhaps closing the, a classroom or a school if there's some guidance available on that topic. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, thank you, Mr. O'Hearn. So this closes um, the public comment portion of the evening. I think to be most efficient, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Murphy to try to answer the questions in order, but I also encourage everyone to please, please go on the website that they built out literally over the weekend, because most of these questions asked are all addressed in there in the FAQs, but we're gonna go through and address them tonight. Um, and just understand that that document will be updated constantly as we get more information. So Dr. Murphy. Sure, thank you. Again, uh, thank you, uh, Andrew. That was a fantastic presentation. And thank you to all the administrators who helped build that. So in order, um, I'll clarify again some of my comments from the opening. The Board of Health didn't um, say no about opening because of the number of COVID cases. If you look back at the roadmap, it says that we need to be able to socially distance. So in our buildings, some of our buildings are older than others. Some of classrooms are newer than others. To, we are not, um, and I agree, we are not able to socially distance 3,000 kids in our current buildings. So please understand that this was not because there is a rise in COVID cases or not a rise. It was simply that we can't fit all 3,000 kids back in our schools. Now, if the governor changes those um, social distancing, we'll revisit it. So know that this will remain fluid, but please don't think that there was anything, any alternative motive. There's no more data to share with you. I'm sharing with you the conversation word for word that it's about 3,2800 kids in our buildings. And why we're not full time, it again, it has nothing to do with social distancing. It has to do with the fact that we have to allow time for the teachers to teach the remote learners. Okay, so uh, not having a full day has nothing to do about the safety necessarily. A byproduct of having a minimum day is more time to clean, but it's about, the, it's about remote learners. And if the governor changes the parameters on it, um, we'll go back and visit it. And then maybe we can go to full day. I, I don't know. As I also stated uh, in my opening remarks, and it's also up on the website, I am working with the Board of Health on the COVID protocols. So uh, I am not shying away. I'm not not answering them. I, I don't have them. 
Uh, believe me, no one wants them more than I do. As my mother likes to remind my entire family, I'm not a real doctor. Okay, my sister married the real doctor. So um, I don't, you know, we need a flow chart that is understood by everyone, full transparency about what happens if someone uh, is diagnosed, teacher, staff, family member. So as soon as I get it, the community will get it. I'm not, I'm not holding anything back. In terms of, uh, I, it's a great suggestion to put the minimum hours up there. But right now, the, the same minimum hours like a minimum day that we've had for decades here in Ramsey. They're up on not the COVID, not the reopening website, but it's the same day. So the gentleman who is concerned that it's four hours with drop off pickup, it's not. It's four hours that you're in our schools. And I don't know them offhand because we have five different start times and whatever, but they're the same basic start times. We might adjust a little bit if we do some staggering, but nothing major. And Dr. Murphy, do you mind if I jump in real quick? We also have to clarify that. Um, certain students go to school longer that have special requirements. So I again, it's I want to reiterate that one of our guiding principles is to make sure we get the students what they need and we are uh, committed to it. As to what is not happening, well, visitors in the beginning aren't happening, but I'll work with the PTO and I'll work with our administrators on uh, figuring out what is happening and what's not happening. I, I would tell you, unless something um, changes dramatically, I can't see back to school night happening. You know, so um, more specifics will come out with that. To the question about if the governor has announced any plans, I don't, I get the news about our school systems through a tweet, okay? So yesterday I received the information about remote learning through a tweet. Um, I've gotten used to knowing things now um, through social media about our school district. So I, to Sarah, I don't know um, about that. Um, I'll keep you up to date if I, if I find out. In terms of subscription busing, I know we've had multiple questions. We're not changing our approach to subscription busing. And in fact, there might even be more spots open because if students aren't coming to school because they're going to uh, choose remote learning, that might open up some spots. So Tom, do you have anything to add, Mr. O'Hearn, about subscription busing? No, we're definitely offering it and um, they're all, um you know, disclaimers, basically, that we have to service the kids that are qualified for mileage. Um, so if 10 kids move into Ramsey, that's what all those disclaimers are about. Then the subscription students would be um, moved off that bus because we have to, by law, um, go by mileage kids. And that means if you're two or two and a half miles from school, we have to bus you to schools. But, but nothing's often, changing. Nothing's changing. Right. Thank you, Tom. In, um, in terms of the questions about uh, uh, the questions about race and diversity, first, while I haven't had a chance to digest the letter, to the 15 families who signed it, thank you. Um, thank you for taking the time to write a thoughtful letter. Thank you uh, for taking the time to watch tonight. Hopefully, you learned a little bit more about what we were planning pre-COVID and what we're still trying to do during this COVID time. I. Uh, the administration has met and is meeting with consultants to help us with this. I will be very honest that because of the reopening plans, we have not made as much progress as we would like. And I, I know there's a few of you, I couldn't catch all of your names, but to Lorraine Perry, I think is a former teacher and to Deb Falco and to others from the bottom of my heart, I, I thank you for that. But as we get more information, as it comes together, I'll be sure to share it. I'm not hiding it from you. I'm being honest with you that we haven't made as much progress due to this, but we are making some about uh, hiring and uh, getting outside experts to help guide us because Dr. Matteo and I, Mrs. Crowley, fully know that this is something that we need assistance with. So uh, I do appreciate that. 
Um, I, I think, Deb, you asked about the composition of our, of our staff and so forth. So statewide, just because we've been on some webinars about this, statewide, the student population is about 56% color and 20% of teachers are of color. Okay, statewide, 56 students, 20 staff. In Ramsey, we're about 20% of our students are of, of, are of color and 4% of staff. So Deb, I hope that answers your question. Um, to the question about live streaming, I think uh, a few people talked about that. It is not going to be four straight hours of sitting in front of a computer and hearing Matthew Murphy drone on and on. Um, first of all, no one wants to hear Matthew Murphy drone on and on, especially Mia Murphy, Madison Murphy, and my wife, Megan Murphy. However, it is going to be live, meaning there's going to be interaction. One of the lessons, one of the best feedback or number one type of survey response is synchronous, which is uh, live teaching is far more effective than asynchronous. So the schools will work out uh, schedules. You'll, that's not something we have right now. But know, though, there's going to be interactions with the class led by a teacher or teachers. But it's not going to be four straight hours where you have to sit in the seat. And the reason I say that is that's everything we're against in Ramsey. We don't want our students sitting four hours in their seats at, T at Tisdale School and at Hubbard, right? We don't want them four hours in front of a computer screen. So it might be I introduce an activity and then come back in 15 minutes and we're gonna share out. But again, that's just an example. And I think that will help with the live streaming bandwidth issue and also the whole concept of, is it even developmentally correct to have a student sit four hours in front of a computer screen? So thank you for that. Um, up on the website, again, is the FAQs. We are requiring all staff and students to wear masks. We are going to be socially distant. Face we, coverings, Dr. Murphy. Face no. coverings, thank you. Face yep. coverings, yes. Yep. So I think one of the parents had a concern about social distancing. Remember, it's half the, half the school is in. So we will be able to be socially distant in our classes, never mind for those students who are going to go 100% remote. So we are very confident that our classrooms will be able to uh, properly have uh, social distancing. And uh, the masks are a requirement. A new lexicon will be mask breaks. Of course, masks uh, for those with a medical or a disability will always be student-centered first. Um, I have no doubt that our teachers will have a haiku, a rhyme, some sort of song that goes along with a mask break before we know it. So it is not uh, even in the realm of possibility or even reasonable to think that a child Never mind an adult is going to wear a mask for the four straight hours that they're here. Okay, but it is a requirement and there'll be breaks led by the professionals, the teachers and the principals and so forth. So I don't want you to think anyone that I'm being lax on it, but you know, we need to understand that there'll have to be a break for a first grade classroom to take it off. Okay. All right, I think we've addressed all the questions. Um, and I do refer everybody to the FAQs because there's a lot more information there. So at this time, do we have any board member comments? Go ahead, Mrs. Walsh. Um, hi, everybody. I just wanted to say a couple of things. Um, graduation was amazing. Like um, Dr. Murphy, it is my favorite night of the year. It kind of reminds me. <clears throat> excuse me, of why we do all that we do. Um, and um, I have to say that moment, you know, when everybody kind of stood up and just that level of appreciation, because um, there was a real understanding that there was a good chance it was not going to happen. And um, 
not every district did make it happen and couldn't make it happen, but um, everybody worked really well together to kind of make it happen. It was extremely special. I was worried it wasn't going to be, you know, you know, just like it is every year, but it was actually, I think, even better. Um, so that was really impressive. Um, as part of the committee um, for the past couple of weeks, I have to say that I was truly impressed by um, just how everybody was really motivated, although we didn't always have the same thoughts, which you don't really want to have the same thoughts in a committee. You really want to have you know, those conversations where not everybody agrees, but we understand you know, the thought process that everybody has and we take those into consideration. I think it was really productive. Um, I really enjoyed working with all these different people. I never would have had the opportunity to do that. But the students that participated um, were very impressive, um, I have to say. And, you know, Mr. Matteo, Dr. Matteo, your uh, presentation was very good. I have to say, I did pay attention the entire time. So um, you held my, my attention, which was impressive. And, um, but, really the hard work that you and Dr. Murphy and everybody, um, it's its impressive how quickly you can pivot and how thoughtful the pivoting becomes. You know, the, the outcome is thorough. Um, the communication has been amazing. I really hope people do stop and look at those links. Um, a lot of the questions that were on social media as soon as the announcement were, was made, um, can be found there. And I truly hope that people really do consider the fact that we are not going to please everybody that difficult decisions were made, but the safety of the staff and the students and the continuing education were definitely at the forefront of all of these decisions. So I might not be the most popular person on the face of uh, Ramsey right now, but that's okay. Because as a committee, we really did some great work. So, I think Thank that's all I have to say. Mr. Caputo? Yes, I just want to um, reiterate some of the things that Ms. Walsh just said. Um, I was at graduation with some of the board members. Graduation was amazing. I'm so glad that we made it happen. And thanks to those who made it happen. I know um, Dr. Murphy, he was calm, patient, calm, cool, collected. He waited for the governor's announcements. It's always great to, um, to hear pomp and circumstance in person, see the kids. We did it for the kids and we did the right thing. Dr. Thumb, um, he said it was a, another magical, another magical Ramsey graduation. And it was, he says it every year, how the arms um, of, the, of our building stretch out to our graduates and um, it sure does. Uh, so on behalf of the graduates, thank you for what we, what we did for them here in Ramsey. Just a few shout outs. I, um, I took some notes um, and thanks for keeping the weather in check, Dr. Murphy. Um, um, valedictorian, Erica, Jeannie, beautiful speech. Um, Carolyn Swanaweed, salutatorium, really nice. And um, Kylie, Evelyn, Julia, wonderful, wonderful rendition of Forever Young. Carolyn, in my life, beautiful. And Nick, best wishes going into the Marines. President of 2020 class, Tyler, wonderful, wonderful inspirational words. And, um, and thanks for this president of Student Congress, Olivia, uh, leading the pledge at the beginning of the ceremony. I like the standing ovation. It was just, it, we made it happen. We made it happen, it was really good. So though, even though it was nice and hot and humid, but I think we got a cool breeze in there somehow. Um, a few, a few um, teachers, Bill Ch Chesney, Lynn Novak, Kim Martin, congratulations on um, retirement and supervisor uh, Tom Santuli, um, congratulations on retirement. And just real quickly, I don't want to, meeting's getting long, but I just want to also say the work that we're putting in, those people who have put in, Dr. Matteo, this is a thorough job, I know. I know that I want to get back into the classroom, okay, everybody? I know I haven't said it in a while. I want to get back into the classroom in Linden. And I want to see the kids. 
I'm a teacher. I want to see the kids. I want to see the expressions on their face when they don't get it. And then when they get it, you're like, wow, we did it. We did it. And that's what we want. But we have to be safe. Guys, we have to be safe. So I know we have a good mix of business people on the board. I know we have a great, we have a great amount of um, educators, educators. So we're there for the kids, we're there for the community. And I'm, I'm thinking we're making the right decision on this. And um, thank you community and, t and parents for calling in and, um, and giving your input. It means a lot, it means a lot to us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Caputo. Anyone else? I, I'll, I've got a couple things Go I just want to um, say here. I, first, I want to uh, thank Dr. Mattia for a, a tremendous presentation uh, that very clearly laid out uh, what obviously was uh, a large amount of work and uh, uh, discussions and debates on, on what we're going to do moving forward. And then uh, along with that, a, th a, a big thank you to the Restart Committee um, and I was uh, so happy to see that it included um, all stakeholders in our district and in our community. Um, and it was not a decision that was taken lightly. It was not a plan that was made on a whim. Um, but you, you, we really got the input of uh, parents, teachers, students. I mean, you name it, any, everybody was included in that. Um, and, and that gives me a lot of confidence uh, with these recommendations that come from the committee, knowing that we had input from such a diverse group. Um, and, um, you know, I, I feel confident after seeing Dr. Matteo's presentation that the teachers of Ramsey are prepared for whatever comes their way this school year. Um, and that goes back to work that was put in before we went remote, before coronavirus, before uh, March 13th. Um, from uh, the work with Jay McTie and, and Understanding by Design, all of that stuff, all of those professional developments make the teacher's uh, ability to transition their curriculum much easier because they know it like the back of their hand. And so all of that work that was put in um, gives me a lot of confidence in, in, coming, in the coming school year that whatever is thrown our way, uh, our district, our teachers, uh, they'll be able to adapt and they'll be able to provide a great education for our students. Um, and then lastly, um, and certainly not least, uh, I really applaud uh, the work um, that's been done uh, given uh, the current circumstances uh, with diversity in our district and the work that is going to continue to be done. Um, I, I appreciate all the questions and the comments uh, that have come our way. Um, I know that given uh, the, the scope of the restart plans and all that, that could take a back seat, but I'm glad that it is at the forefront of the minds of our community um, and certainly our school leaders um, and, and, and a, a job well done to Mr. LaCurza for, uh, you know, the audit of the, the school libraries. I mean, that is, that's important stuff. Um, those, that data is, uh, is crucial for our students uh, and for our district as a whole. It's hard work, but it's important work. Um, and I just want to commend uh, everybody on, on the work they've done and, and encourage more work uh, moving forward that we know will happen. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Schifano. Anybody else? Hey, Laura. I just want to, um, again, as everybody said, thank Dr. Matteo and Dr. Murphy because uh, from an out, outside perspective, everybody probably thought that all of us board members already knew what was going to happen. So. I got to see this plan roll out today with this, with your presentation. And while yes, my original inclination was to be upset because quite frankly, like I want my children in school. Right. But as you went through that, it was so clear to me how thoughtful that everybody was and how thoughtful 144 people were from every perspective and looking at every type of student in our district, you know, online I'm seeing, of course, all the young parents want the young kids at school all day long, get the middle schoolers, get the high schoolers out, they're independent, they can learn on their own. They can't, you know, I look at my nieces, my nephews, they need that time in school just as much as everybody else. We have to make sure it's clear that you've thought about every student 
not even your high performers, not just your special needs student, but it's clear that you looked at it all and said, okay, how can we maximize it and make sure that there's no kids falling through the cracks, that having all of our high schoolers home, there are a ton of kids who are not high performers, who are not independent learners, and they're not ready to be yet. So I'm thankful that you offered that. I'm also thankful that Clearly, you all thought ahead of the game and offered some flexibility for the parents who are not confident yet at doing this or are worried about our staff more so. I just, it's its obvious that a lot of time and effort, so my being upset or, or just disappointed that my child can't be there five days a week is put to the side realizing that this is not a Ramsey issue, everyone. This is not a New Jersey issue. This is a complete America issue. We all are going to have this problem. Every kid is going to be, you know, there's gonna be gaps across everything. So, and I talked to somebody earlier today who was reminding me, this is temporary. You know, I was talking about oh, what the next year is gonna look at like, and they were reminding me, this is temporary right now. The, even the plan that's rolled out at this moment that we're all looking at, it's temporary. Anything can change between now and the start of school and big changes could happen. But I feel very confident in our staff and the administration that you all are going to be fully prepared regardless of what happens before then. So I just want to thank the staff and the administration and also just the parents who took the time. There's, there was no gain there other than having your opinion heard. I saw some of the communications that came through from the parents. Thank you for sharing that. And just to remind everybody on social media, it's going to fall on deaf ears there because at this point, a lot of us are ready to leave the groups and not look at what's going on there. So unless you're filling, like filing it through the proper protocols, we're not all on social media 24 seven. We can't see every single comment. And I think it's just your best bet is like today, call in, make your voice heard, make your voice heard, write an email to Dr. Murphy. Sorry, I'm saying that Dr. Murphy, send your emails to the board of ed. I know you're getting inundated in communications, but just overall, I wanna thank you all. It was, um, I feel better from where I was, say five hours ago, that to where I am now. It's still gonna take time for everybody in this community to digest. Even hearing about aftercare, Dr. Murphy, that everybody's thinking about that perspective for the families that are going to have this issue, I had no idea that was on the table. So I think everybody is just going to have to take the time, do their research and understand and have a little patience. And I know that's hard to say when we're almost at August, right? But stuff is being thrown at the team rapid fire. So I just appreciate the quick moving, the pivoting, the collaboration that happened, the flexibility that was offered. And I'm thankful to all of you. Thank you. The, the profile of a Ramsey graduate in action. Uh, Laura, just uh, would uh, yeah. like to add a quick comment. Um, just thinking about the folks that called in today, letters we're receiving, and understanding how challenging this is for absolutely everyone involved. As Jen just said, this is not a local issue. This is a, a global issue. Um, and as much as we have asked so much of each other and of parents, um, I do try myself, and that's why I will encourage others as well, to really try to come to center each day on what's happening because our kids, as resilient as they may be, are facing even greater stress from this, although it may manifest differently than we are processing it as adults. Um, you know, snow days used to be fun. The idea of you're not going to be in school for five days a week doesn't draw a lot of smiles. And we understand why they can't be right now. Um, but as much as we can, uh, as a community, continue to have this open dialogue and conversation, Dr. Murphy, thank you for being accessible. Um, Dr. Matteo, the presentation was terrific. I will dive deeper into the website, um, FAQs. And um, for those of us at large in the community, I just want to reiterate to parents, um, none of us are alone in this. And that conversations, you know, maybe their social media conversations, but more importantly, in person and connecting with people who can get us the answers and um, 
and move this forward one step at a time. So thanks to everyone uh, at the, in the community and in the administration for this hard work. We've got more work to do, but I'm confident we'll get through it together. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lamondola. Anyone else on the board? Okay. If not, um, before you move into motions, uh, there's three things I just want to remind the community about. One, first and foremost, we love to share information here in Ramsey, and I can assure you as additional information becomes available, Dr. Murphy will continue to share that. I recognize there are a lot of questions. We as a board and as our administration have tons of questions. We're waiting for more answers. This is literally an hourly, this changes hour to hour here with what's going on. Um, two, please understand that we get the same information you get from the governor's office. I get calls all the time saying, you know, have you heard anything yet? We hear it when you hear it. I think Dr. Murphy referred to it before. We see it in a tweet. I think we were on the phone when that tweet came out yesterday. I was on the phone with an administrator a few weeks ago when another tweet or, or plan got rolled out. We know nothing. We all learn it at the same time. So just understand that. And lastly, I want to remind the community that we are required here to adhere to all the regulations that the governor has in place at, every, at any time. And I want you all to realize that the two week out of state quarantine that's in place, we will be adhering to here unless that is lifted. So for those of you who are traveling late in August or who are planning vacations in the fall over long weekends, you're traveling to a quarantine state, you've got to self quarantine your children and yourselves for two weeks when you come back. So um, at this point, as we're entering into August, I really just wanted to be very upfront about that while it's listed on our website. I know not everybody reads that stuff and um, that may impact some of you significantly in terms of what you may be planning for your families later this summer. So um, with that, I'd like to move into the motions. We don't have very many tonight. Um, we have one administrative motion. Mrs. Walsh, if you can start with that. Is that my resignation for the purpose of retirement immediate? <laughs> I might need to tow it. Um, <laughs> no. Go ahead, Mrs. Walsh. I was too busy telling Dr. Murphy to put his mute button on, but I had not taken mine off. Isn't that the deal? If there are no objections, I'd like to make a motion to move administration to R. There a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Burns. Roll call, please. Ms. Burns? Yes. Mr. Capuano? Yes. Mr. Caputo? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Ms. Lamandola? Yes. Mr. Schifano? Yes. Mr. Sassi? Yes. Ms. Walsh? Yes. Ms. Pierman? Yes. Personnel motion, Mrs. Walsh? If there are no objections, I'd like to make a motion to move personnel 1R through 26R. Is there a second? A second. Thank you, Ms. Lamandola. Roll call, please. Ms. Burns? Yes. Mr. Capuano? Yes. Mr. Caputo? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Ms. Lamandola? Yes. Mr. Schifano? Yes. Mr. Sassi? Yes. Ms. Walsh? Yes. Ms. Beerman? Yes. Uh, finance motions, Mr. Sassi? If there are no objections, I'd like to move finance 1R through 3R as a block. Thank you. I think, think you missed one. There's no, more. we're holding that yeah. out. That's fine. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Capuano. Ms. Burns? Yes. Mr. Capuano? Yes. Mr. Caputo? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Ms. Lamandola? Yes. Mr. Schifano? Yes. Mr. Sassi? Yes. Ms. Walsh? Yes. Ms. Beerman? Yes. There are no objections. I'd like to move finance uh, 4R. Is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you. Roll call. Ms. Burns? Yes. Mr. Capuano? Yes. Mr. Caputo? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Ms. Lamandola? No vote. Mr. Schifano? Yes. Mr. Sassi? Yeah. 
Ms. Walsh? Yes. Ms. Bierman? Yes. Um, and for the public, a no vote means the person has a conflict of interest. It's not a vote of no. Okay, community outreach motions, Mr. Capuano. If there are no objections, I would like to make a motion to move community outreach 7-1-R for approval. Thank you, is there a second? And I'll, I'll second that. Thank you, Mr. Caputo. Roll call, please. Ms. Burns? Yes. Mr. Capuano? Yes. Mr. Caputo? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Ms. Lamandola? Yes. Mr. Schifano? Yes. Mr. Sassi? Yes. Ms. Walsh? Yes. Ms. Bierman? Yes. Thank you. That concludes our motions this evening. Uh, before we adjourn the meeting, thank you to all those who have been submitting their feedback in writing to the board and to Dr. Murphy and for those who called in tonight to provide us with your feedback and your questions. We do appreciate it. At this time, do I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, Dr. Murphy, go ahead, Dr. Murphy. Sorry. I want to say thank you again. I want to thank the Board of Education. Laura Bierman is our president for the support. But more than that, I'm calling for a sense of Ramsey unity here, okay? Jen, Mrs. Burns, you said it so, so eloquently about the mixed emotions. I get it. But now more than ever, we need to come together, put our differences aside, because the next few weeks and the next few months, our priority has to be our children, making them safe and happy. Um, I apologize. I wish I could have done better in putting a, you know, a, a better plan. But I'm calling for now a sense for this community to come together. I know Ramsey can. We're only gonna be as good as we are working with each other, okay? So please, I ask all of you, let's put that anger aside. The children are watching. They're watching what, how we act. They're watching what we say. And it's going to have a dr dramatic impact on how they start the school year. So please, I just call for a sense of unity on, for all of us. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. Okay, at this point, do we have a motion to adjourn? I move. Thank Aye. you, Mrs. Aye. Mrs. Burns. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.